And next, I'd like to introduce Kurt Lawrence. Kurt has 37 years of experience in refinery, with 30 years on the alkylation unit. He is a global expert in HF and MHF alkylation. He has participated in multiple HF alkylation audits throughout the world. Please welcome Kurt. As you mentioned, uh, I did want to mention that I am a Torrance resident for over 20 years. Um, I do have a family here, and uh, everything she mentioned is true. Um, I don't always call myself a global expert, but I have worked in the Alki for quite some time. And the question I would say there is, knowing all this information that I know, and I know you've had a lot of people come to uh, the meetings and express their, their concerns and their frustrations and telling you how, how safe this place is, why would I leave or live in this, this, first of all, why would I work here? And the second is, why would I raise my family here? I mean, you really got to think about that. Um, the, the very frustrating and irritating thing that myself personally and, and my peers, workers here at the, the refinery, um, is hearing the media and hearing the falsehoods. And it's very difficult because you really can't say stuff in, in public forums. And we live and work in this town. Um, but the one that really gets to me, and I know it frustrates my peers also, is, is the workforce doesn't understand what they're doing because these big oil companies are lying to you. Okay, first of all, there's been three companies now in my career. The thing to note there is it's the same people working here. The people don't change, it's the company changes. It's the same units, same people. The other thing I want to note there is I, I don't understand how people think that if people are lying to us about what we're doing, how you could actually do your job. If you didn't know what you were dealing with, how could you do your job? So we take great pride and in, in we hold each other accountable. And, and I know you've heard that many times, but I really want you to think about that, that our main objective is to leave the same way we came in. And, and we're the, the ones firsthand in these units. Um, what I can tell you is I have never, because I've heard some, some people say they stay up all night, uh, knowing what I know and working in this unit for so long, I have never ever gone to bed at night worrying about my family here, my family in Torrance, dying from a acid cloud coming across Torrance. And the reason that is, is because I know what I know. I'm very familiar with it. What I do worry about at night is my son getting into a car with his buddies on a Friday night and going out partying. So enough with the personal stuff, but I thought it was very important for you to understand that the personal piece is big for us because we, we are a big part of making sure that the community is safe. Um, we've kind of only been talking about half the toolbox and, and MHF and barriers are the foundation of that toolbox. But the more layers of protection that you can put on top of that toolbox, the better off you are. So I kind of wanted to go through some of the uh, the items that we don't really discuss too much about and kind of give you a high school graduate's perception of how it works. And um, I did want to let you know that millions of dollars, whether you know it or not, has been spent on this particular unit outside of MHF prior and after. So these systems we're going to talk about been, and I think you mentioned them earlier, <coughs> have been going in service, and as technology comes out, it gets added to this unit. So, so the first one I'll talk about is the, the acid evacuation system. This is kind of known as the dump system. 
So what this is, is a system that will actually take all the acid in the running unit, and by a push of a button, it opens up a bunch of valves and takes all the acid from the unit and dumps it over to a storage drum dedicated behind a big, huge cement wall. It takes about seven minutes to, to totally dump all the acid in the unit, but note that most of that acid is actually dumped within the first two minutes because it's sequenced in a way that those, you saw that big settler, that's where most of the acid sits in the unit, those go first. So the first two minutes, that acid's gone. So the rest of those minutes are spent taking the trace acid out of the unit. The other thing to note about the acid evacuation system is, I've heard a lot about uh, what happens if there's a power bump. That system's actually got a battery backup system. Um, I've also heard, well, what happens if you lose air? Because air actually controls the valves. So each one of those valves actually has a spare tank with, with air in it that will actually stroke those valves four times. So in case of any of those type events, that system will still work. Water cannons. So I think if you imagine, you've all seen the big monitors on the back of a fire truck. So there's, there's 10 of those strategically placed up in the air around the unit. Each one of those can be controlled from the, the console and from several remote uh, places out in the unit. So in case of emergency, we can start those water, you can turn them, you can adjust spray, and all that type of stuff. Those have been upgraded within the last 10 years to be a very, very robust system. <clears throat> now, the rest of these, the, the thing I want to talk about on the rest of these, so that's if it, an incident happens. <clears throat> but the way we run the Alki is really about surveillance. So right off the bat, this unit, which is not plot size wise very big, if you go into the refinery, there's actually two operators, 24 seven, which is a, one more than you normally would have in any other unit. And it's got a dedicated council supervisor with camera systems looking at it. So all this is about catching anything quick, looking at anything that, that looks abnormal, and taking action. So for MHF sensors, so the sensors, there, there's two sets of sensors now. The, the point sensors that are strategically, I think there's 28 of them throughout the unit, which read at a very, very low PPM level. In fact, it's two PPM. Um, those sensors have been in since the early 90s. We just recently, within the last five years, installed a second redundant system called the laser system. And that system is actually on the perimeter of the unit. And it, it sees at very low PPM levels, it will sense the HF. The, these sensors actually alarm the, the point sensors actually alarm in the unit um, to the console and at 6 ppm not only alarm the, the console but also alarm AQMD. So they're modemed over there. The, uh, the HF indicating paint, so if you look inside that, that barrier on the flange there, all your connections have what we call uh, HF indicating paint. This paint is very, very, very sensitive. So what happens is if, there, if it senses any kind of HF, the color of that paint will turn red. And this all goes to this is what we're looking for. <clears throat> if, uh, if you went up to, to one of those flanges and it was red and you took a gas meter that actually would be looking for HF, 
you would not, it would show zero. That's how sensitive that pain is. So throughout the unit, all your connections, threaded connect connections, flanges, uh, tubing, it's all painted with that paint. That's what the operators are looking at when they're we're walking the units 24-7. Analyzers, we just recently in the last five years put in a HF analyzer that, that actually looks at the acid stream and its properties 24-7 again. Um, instead of, you know, the past, we would get a sample every 12 hours. So there was a period of time you were kind of looking at other parameters. The interlock systems um, are very, very complex, and there's a lot of them. I don't want to get into detail on those, although what I'll tell you about those is they, they, they're looking at something that's going the wrong direction. And what it does, it will shut a valve or divert a flow or shut a tower down automatically. So there's, there's a lot of those that have gone in in the last 10 years. The other question that's been coming up, and I know Chiten talked about the earthquakes. Um, the thing that I can tell you about CalARP in the OUT unit <coughs> from a past assessment, uh, I think we put in about four to five million dollars worth, worth of uh, restructuring on what we call, the, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, it's on the bottom of the tower. It kind of be what, uh, it's like your found, you got your foundation and this is what holds your, your vessels and towers up. Um, we, we went and we had to beef up all those with new metal thicker to meet the new CalARP codes. So like I said, and many people have, um, it's a lot of information. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be here to answer them. Thank you.